if you can see my screen. Can I get a thumbs up? Looks All good. right, Allison. Excellent. Okay. So here's the landing page, and I've not tried to do a PowerPoint through Zoom before, so if we have technical issues, bear with me. So the mission of the Sons of Norway Foundation isn't just scholarships. It's really dedicated to three things. It wants to preserve and promote Norwegian heritage. It wants to positively affect members themselves and their lives. And it wants to make all of our communities a more vibrant place to live. What I like about that is it involves learning about Norwegian heritage and promoting it. That doesn't mean just within Sons of Norway, but in our broader community. It means supporting members like the original members of Sons of Norway did when they formed an, you know, a, a fraternal benefit society to help each other when they couldn't get insurance and they couldn't get help from banks and they were immigrants and they were kind of the outcasts of, of their neighborhoods. They wanted to help each other and that's what the foundation is still doing. And then with respect to the third thing Sons of Norway Foundation does, involvement in the community, that's a great way of showing people what we do. We don't just do things within the lodges, within our districts. We go out into the community like our Scandinavian forebears. We build communities, we participate, we show up, we encourage, we support. So those are the really three pillars of the mission of the foundation. And those get me excited to fly to Minnesota or fly to Zoom to be on my board meetings. Over the last few years, we've done a lot of work at the foundation and we've come up with a list of core values. Tom was there in the basement of the old Sons of Norway headquarters when we brainstormed these values. And we had a really interesting conversation about what the foundation's core values should be. There's six and they're all a little bit different even though some of them overlap. The first is creating the heritage of the future. Not just the heritage of the, the today, but what will be considered Norwegian heritage tomorrow. So when my children are old, what will they look back and think Norwegian heritage means? So the foundation wants to play a part in, in what that is. The second is sustaining the link to contemporary Norway. That's a way to make the founda foundation really relevant to modern times. We all love lefsa, we all love folk dancing, and we all love rose mauling and traditional folk crafts. But by also looking to the Norway of today and the ways that Norway is leading the world in human rights, in technology, in you know, green development, those can appeal to a different audience who, who likes Lefsa but also is living in the modern world. The third value, commitment to lifelong learning and service, we've talked about already. In Sons of Norway, we love learning about Norway and all things Norwegian. The fourth value, preserving compassion for those in need, speaks to, as I said, the original purpose of the foundation. We help each other when things are bad. The fifth, funding innovative individuals and opportunities, speaks to our desire to be part of growth and change for Sons of Norway and for our communities in general. And the last one, fostering a cohesive community of philanthropy, is something that Sons of Norway wants to emphasize amongst members. We don't just give to ourselves, we don't just give to Sons of Norway, we give to everyone and we want to be a, known as a philanthropic organization with generous and giving members. So those are the six core values that motivate us. We help our members in particular in three ways. There's three ways that the foundation really works with members to achieve those goals and support those values. The first one is we give grants to lodges, community partners, and members in need. There's two new initiatives, or rather, I should say, revived initiatives or refined initiatives that have changed since Tom was on the, on the board. And that is our humanitarian and um, medical and disaster relief grants. Those are new this year. So starting, I'll talk about them a little bit later in the presentation, but when members you know, fall on hard times, there's ways that Sons of Norway can be there immediately, you know, possibly quicker than, than other grant applications or other forms of relief. So we, in addition to doing grants for lodges to make lodges more vital and to community partners like the Draken campaign, we directly help members. Scholarships, 
The second way that we help members is probably the most obvious. If you pick up your October issue of The Viking, there's a nice feature about our scholarship winners. They're all bright and shiny and excited about learning Norwegian things. The last uh, way that we can be there for members is something that a lot of people don't think about, but it's actually one of the easiest ways to be involved with the foundation, and that's through legacy giving. Um, I'm an estate planning attorney, so I help clients all the time draw up wills or trusts and more elaborate estate planning vehicles. And Sons of Norway is a great recipient for some charitable legacy planning. It's a lot easier to give away money after you've passed away than during your lifetime. I tell that to clients all the time. But Sons of Norway is one way that you can have leave a legacy um, related to your Norwegian heritage. So talking more about each of those different elements of the foundation in turn, the first is grants. We offer a, a wide range of categories of grants, large vitality grants, grants for children, grants for those in need, and the amount varies depending on the need. Um, and I'll, again, I have a, a list further in the presentation that gives specific amounts, but I have to emphasize my, my executive director would be angry if I didn't encourage you all to apply for grants because we want more applications. We want to give away more money. And so if your lodge has something it wants to do, if you know a community partner who might benefit from Sons of Norway grant funding, if someone has fallen on hard times in your lodge, apply, apply, apply. There's money there. The foundation wants to help. We've already given a lot of grants to District 2 already. Dave Ellingson got a grant to finish his documentary about kayaking through the Norwegian fjords. The Nordic Knitting Museum got a grant to support its Nordic Knitting Conference. I don't think it was last year, maybe two years ago, they even brought Arnie and Carlos, who are kind of Norwegian knitting celebrities. I got to meet them um, to the uh, Nordic Center in Seattle, and that was a lot of fun. So those are two examples. In terms of Lodge Vitality, the Edmonds Lodge got a grant to remodel their Viking ship that they use in parades, and Svalbard Lodge had a Nordic Film Festival. So those are just a few ideas of things that are eligible for and, and successful um, Lodge grants. And about $10,000 has been given um, since last year just to District 2, so that's exciting. Here's a more comprehensive list of the types of grants that we offer and their amount. The Lodge Vitality Grant that I mentioned before, you can use to fix your roof if you need to, even projects that mundane. Up to $1,000 is available per grant. Cultural and heritage grants, nor mostly for um, you know, traditional folk crafts, dancing, rose modeling, things like that um, are available up to $1,500. If you see a community need, we offer $1,000 toward community partnerships that promote Norwegian heritage and culture. There's a lot of those in the, in the Pacific Northwest and in particular the greater Seattle area. Helping Hands to Children is a grant that we have particularly for children. So if we have local organizations that are partnering um, or partnering with Sons of Norway on child-focused activities, we offer grants for that as well. And the last one is what I mentioned earlier, the Helping Hands to Members. That's bifurcated into two different programs. The first is in cases of medical hardship. If you have a serious medical illness or um, other injury and you are underinsured or having difficulty paying for your medical bills, the foundation can issue a grant of up to $5,000 to help you cover those expenses. Similarly, up to $5,000 is available if some kind of natural disaster causes severe property damage to your home, your business, something like that. Often those funds are available more quickly than um, federal aid through FEMA because Sons of Norway does not require a FEMA declaration or a disaster, federal disaster declaration in order to provide help to members. Again, the grand total, thirty to $50,000, um, is given out annually, depending on how many applications are received in a given year. You guys have until December 30th, almost three months, to apply. So I would encourage you to you know, put your heads together and think of ways Vester Dolan can benefit from foundation funds. Next, we come to scholarships. You guys have heard from someone who received a scholarship, um, which I'll, who I'll mention, he's on the next slide. Um, but scholarships are one of the funnest things that we do. It's really exciting to see young people 
take funds from Sons of Norway and either travel to Norway and learn about Norway or pursue other studies, knowing they have the support of their Norwegian community. That's pretty great. We have 14 different types of scholarships. They range in uh, value from $1,000 to full tuition, and they can really be life-changing for the recipients. Here we've got a highlight of um, Arnie. Because of the Sons of Norway Foundation Scholarship, he was able to go to the Folk High School at Valderes in um, Norway for a year, and he seems to have had an amazing experience based on his report. I know you guys probably heard a better account than I did. So I won't, I won't try to repeat his presentation, but it, his experience is not uncommon. I think that's the important thing to know. It, it's not unusual to have a recipient have such a wonderful life-changing experience. So funds given to scholarships really do help connect people to Norway, connect people to their Norwegian heritage, and connect them to Sons of Norway as well. And you know, perhaps hook in lifelong members um, based on one positive youth experience. There's also the Nancy Lorraine Jensen Memorial Scholarship. That's a very popular one. Um, it's for women who are studying in sciences. Amanda Christensen is studying chemical engineering using that scholarship. And the Dan and Betty Rood Scholarship, which was actually created by a former board member, is supporting um, a girl named Emma Davidson in her elementary education studies. So our students in District 2 have gotten over $16,000 in the last two years which is pretty great. I hope we can find more students who can apply and increase that number in the next application cycle. Um, they're doing, applications are open in just a few weeks in early October. So please encourage any young people in your lodge or who are maybe children or grandchildren of Sons of Norway members to apply. Again, there's a wide variety of scholarships available, over $100,000 every year. If you're thinking, I don't know if my program or my field of study or my university qualifies. The answer is probably yes. There's probably something there for your applicant. So don't be discouraged. Um, there's also camperships. I mentioned earlier that I went to Trollhagen. I didn't know about camperships at the time and I wish I had had a foundation <laughs> board member come and talk at my Sons of Norway meeting. Maybe I would have applied. But they support camping in the summer at one of Sons of Norway's heritage camps or the Concordia language villages. So you could go to Skukjorden, you could go to Nidaros, you could go to Normana, a lot of District 2 camps. There's also District um, 1, 3, 5, 6, and 4. They all have really exceptional camping options. So if you maybe have relatives in a Sons of Norway lodge in a different district, those camperships can help their, their young people too. If you want to apply for a grant or a scholarship for those previous two categories, there's applications available online if you just go to sonsofnorway.com slash foundation. Again, repeating the deadline every October, so it's coming up next month, foundation month, that's when the application cycle opens. And there's lots of opportunities that are um, on a rolling kind of a deadline. So go ahead and apply. The last um, kind of element of the foundation or the last way that we can help people is through legacy giving. That is seen most commonly through scholarships that are endowed by people who wish to leave a legacy and support Norwegian heritage in their will or through a charitable remainder trust or something like that. A lot of people who are legacy givers are really committed to Sons of Norway Maybe they had a formative educational experience in their youth related to either Norway itself or studying something about their Norwegian heritage. And their generosity really does keep our scholarship program going. So I would encourage all of you to think about maybe giving a legacy gift and making a scholarship of your own. Um, the endowment principle that we follow is not to touch the principle of any such gifts. Many of them don't actually issue scholarships for several years until enough funds have accumulated that they can make a significant scholarship every year without touching the principal. So I think I like to think of that as a very Norwegian, very Norwegian financial management strategy. You know, conservative. We make sure that we don't live beyond our means at the foundation. We want to keep our scholarships around for many, many generations of students. So. We don't spend principal in our scholarships. We just um, grant scholarships based on the income so we can keep doing it forever. 
there's a lot of different ways to give if you feel like making a charitable donation. As an attorney, I would be remiss if I said, go, or if I didn't say, talk to your estate planning attorney about it <laughs> because whoever has drawn up your will or trust for you could talk about charitable giving as well. But you can in most simply give at sonsofnorway.com slash give. That's an easy way just to make a $10 donation, you know, make it a recurring one if you're feeling like you might forget to give as frequently as you would like. You can also give donations that have tax advantages to you. If you have an appreciated piece of real estate, for example, and you donate it to the foundation, we don't have to pay any tax on the appreciation. So that's a way of perhaps saving a negative tax event for you where you might have to realize some taxable income and also benefiting the foundation. You can also give gifts of appreciated stock. Maybe you bought Apple in 1990. Lucky you. <laughs> if you did and you're just thinking, oh my goodness, how am I ever going to pay that capital gain? You can always choose to give an asset like that to the foundation. And again, we do not have to pay any capital gain tax on the appreciation built into that stock. You can also make gifts of your retirement accounts or life insurance policies just by designating the Sons of Norway Foundation as the beneficiary. You can have fundraisers at your lodge. These are really fun bake sales, um, Lefsa cook-offs, Ludafisk eating competition. <laughs> There's lots of different ways to uh, raise funds at your local lodge and make a gift, maybe during October, you know, a particularly good month to hold such events. And another way, a more complicated way of giving is if you wish to create a charitable trust. And being an attorney who does this and serves on the board, um, if anyone really wants to know how to do that, I, I can give them some pointers. Um, but it's possible to set up a trust that provides income to you for your lifetime. And then whatever is left over goes to Sons of Norway. So if you're worried, oh no, if I make a big legacy gift, I won't have anything left to live on. Um, there's ways that you can structure a gift to make sure that you're taken care of and Sons of Norway is taken care of too. Um, as a tax lawyer, I would be remiss also if I didn't say that Sons of Norway is a 501c3 organization. So of course, all donations to us are tax deductible, which is a win-win. There's other ways to get involved in the Sons of Norway Foundation besides money. Um, you can always become a district or a lodge foundation director. And that's a person who serves as a close liaison between the foundation and individual lodges or an individual district. You can inform um, your lodge directors and members about the foundation um, and its programs, encourage people to apply. You can always help fundraise. That's something that we are always looking for help with. You can promote those six core values that we talked about, you know, print them on a handout, spread them around at meetings, help people um, stay on board with the Sons of Norway Foundation's mission and our values, and um, be an ambassador for those who receive grants and scholarships from us. So help, help them know that we are still there for them. We're excited about what, we're, what they're doing, and um, we're glad that we could be part of their journey. You can also apply for the Board of Governors. Um, I'm gonna be going off the board here in about a year. You can only serve for three consecutive two-year terms and I'm in my last term. So if you wanna be my replacement, um, please apply. Applications um, are come in typically over the late summer and into the fall and are just being reviewed now. And we can always use more enthusiastic Sons of Norway members who share the foundation's values and, and feel inspired by its mission. It does involve trips to Minnesota twice a year, which is kind of fun, but not right now. So this might be a particularly good time to join the foundation if you don't like traveling because we've been having all our meetings by Zoom. Um, but eventually that does involve a really fun trip to Minnesota twice a year. It's not too bad of a flight from, from the uh, Puget Sound area. And you often have a lot of other District 2 directors on the flight with you. I know, I think Tom and I shared an airplane more than once going back to Minnesota. Um, we're always looking for people with technical expertise too. So if you have um, any kind of expertise in the law, in fundraising, in um, social media, that's something that I think every charitable foundation is looking for expertise in right now. 
please apply. You can also um, take a smaller step and become a scholarship or grant reviewer. And those people will review grant applications, review scholarship applications, and actually help us select who receives them. So that's quite a powerful position. And we really value the contributions of people who take the time to read the dozens of applications that we get and carefully consider who could benefit the most from foundation dollars. So those are some ways that you can get involved. I really hope that you consider one of them. Um, the last slide I have tonight is this one. This describes contact information for Ann Olson. She is the actual employee of the foundation. She is our executive director, newly hired, and she's done a great job over the summer. I think she was hired two weeks before the pandemic really shut down everything. So she got to the, I think she got to the Sons of Norway new headquarters, you know, unpacked her things and immediately um, went home. So she has done a tremendous job working from home, really commendable. And she is um, young and excited and brings um, a lot of experience from her previous work in the charitable world. So if you have any questions about becoming a foundation director, working with the lodge and um, district directors on foundation events, how to apply for a grant, am I eligible for a scholarship? Is my grandson eligible for a scholarship? Ask Ann. Um, her email is right there. It's foundation at s of n dot com, and um, she's terrific. So she can be a resource. Contact me. Contact Tom. He's a, a good connection to the foundation too. And um, if you guys have any questions, I'm not sure if I can unmute everybody, but what I'll do is I will stop screen sharing um, so that I can see everyone because right now I'm only seeing a little strip of people on the side. 